Oh, hello, friends. What is this cute little garden gnome that has put down his fishing pole and marched out of the garden to come and tell us about health tech deals? It uh, can only be the January 19th episode of Health in 2.00. Mr. Massa, I'm not actually a garden gnome. This is my fancy thing. And nowadays on the ski slopes, you have to wear it down over your nose and your mouth when you're on the ski line. So that you're COVID, uh, you know, not free, COVID, COVID compliant. And then Very when you're done, good. lift it back over your head. It's like a fez. Anyway. Nice. It goes from hat to mask and neck warmer and back again. I love oh, versatility. Uh, this is it's fashion week. <gasps> Matthew Holt, it delivers the right amount of covering to the right part of your face at the right time. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, <laughs> get your oh, timer. Let's get okay, some okay. tech deals. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, let's go talk some tech deals. Pressing timer button now and we are go. Going. All right. Talk space. They finally get their SPAC IPO together. This was a long time coming. They're valued at 1.4 billion. What do you think? First ever digital mental health company to go public. Yes, yeah, the first and first probably of many. It's one that I'm always a bit dubious about because it was direct to consumer. They don't have that many customers, like 35, 40,000, even with their growth for the last year. And this year, or the last year's revenue 2020 was only about high 70s million. And so the valuation compared to that, even for next year, they're talking about 125 million as their that's expected revenue, you know, we're still talking 15 ish, well, 10 to 15 ish times, uh, times revenues, which is a lot. Um, I guess Michael Phelps got some stock, apparently he was the biggest part of the, uh, the presentation, you know. Uh, All right, what about Accolade? They buy second MD for 460 million, half of that in cash. I interviewed CEO Raj Singh a few months ago and he dropped some nuggets in that they, that, about what they were gonna start acquiring. What do you think of this? Does it make sense? Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize they didn't have it because Second MD is kind of like Grand Rounds. It's a second opinion service, which saves money on individual cases, mostly saving money in back surgery and a little bit of cancer. They say they're saving $32,000 per case in, in back surgery. Again, they paid a decent chunk, of, chunk, chunk for that. Half of that was in cash, and it was about 13 times revenue. Uh, by the way, Lennon Phillips, who also does Medici, the telemedicine company, was the founder of Second MD. I don't know how much she's involved now, but a little nugget for you, but not bad. All right. Komodo Health, they get $44 million in a Series D. It also acquired the consulting business from Mavens. And this is not Maven like the women's health Maven. This is something different. So tell us about this one. Yeah, this is their sort of health map trying to tell you which where drug companies, who they should be paying, which doctors they should be paying. You know, it's an add-on. A lot of companies doing this. Interesting. Yeah, and Dries is in there when you oh, What about Dina Health? They get $7 million in an A. Is well, that the two timer? minutes, but you got Dina Health in, so go on with Dina. Okay, great. Dina Health, they get $7 million in an A, bringing their total up to $10 million. Osage Ventures is in this. What does this one do? It's good to see yep. some, some not double-digit million-dollar rounds. <laughs> Well, it's interesting because Dina is is a it's one of these companies in the sort of home care space, managing the staffing of people going to home care. And uh, by the way, uh, you know, we can always rent this. Like the, the first big customer and I think an investor in this is Jefferson, which is Steve Clasco's company. I think uh, Raj Agarwal just left Jefferson uh, was the guy who ran that. So it's the, the and they they say a lot of great things about bringing AI to manage the. Uh, flow of people to the home and who needs what and there is a lot of room for improvement in that sort of home care staffing and we're going to get a lot more people getting care at home so they're in the right box interesting group i talked to the ceo a while ago and uh, it was quite impressive um so i think you'll see that grow and uh, maybe integrate with some more more plays like providers like jefferson and others so we'll see but yeah seven million is hardly, hardly worth bothering talking about these days right <laughs> That's terrible. You sound so snotty. <laughs> no, no. Actually, look, that's a sensible amount. If you're raising, I go back. I mean, I know that we have the ability to get out now with these SPACs, with these incredible valuations. And, you know, there are transactions. We just did the second B one, right, which was at 
10, 15 times revenue. I wish somebody had, had had that level of uh, transaction of health 2.0. But the, the, the key point is, you know, most of these companies to get going don't need 20, 30, 50, 80 million. You need to have a little bit to invest and see if you've actually got a business there. And I suspect Dean is in that category. What's interesting about these SPAC IPOs, I feel like that was something that just like came out of nowhere last year. Like, where was that when we needed it before? <laughs> well, well, I mean, so SPACs are interesting, right? SPACs and direct listing and all that stuff. You are seeing these massive first day pops. There's a great financial journalist who writes for Bloomberg called Matt Levine who says that doesn't matter. You can price the IPO as high as you like. When the market's crazy, it just doubles on the first day anyway. And then you get all these venture capitalists like Bill Gurley saying, you know, well, they're losing, all these companies are leaving money on the table by, by doing a traditional IPO, right? Airbnb went out of the oh, crazy yeah. price, doubled. Um, same thing, by the way, happened with Livonga. Did it quite double last year? Pretty much mm -hmm. on the IPO. Took a while, traded down later, came back massively yeah, up. You know. with a vengeance. Uh, so what these people are all trying to do is two things. One is to make sure that they can uh, actually get a decent, you know, not leave money on that table for the first time. Although some people argue the SPACs take more money out of the company, so you can argue back and forth. The second thing is it obviously allies them with a, an investor, so, you know, that they like who might have some, some, you know, some longer-term interest um, without having to go for the roadshow. So uh, Chaman uh, Papa Playa, I hope I get his name right, who's going on the ex-Facebook guy who did, uh, who did social capital, he did the Clover SPAC, and he's got a whole list of them. He's got like A through Z in SPACs ready to go. So if you don't want to align with an investor like that, because they think that's going to help their company, you know, they're more likely to go the SPAC route than just to go to traditional IPO. But I think it's a fad that'll kind of die out, but it'll die out when the IPO thing dies out. I was talking to a friend of mine this morning, he's running ahead. Hoping this answer dies out soon. <laughs> Rambler. The, the question is, when does the bubble burst? I just was making a comment, not expecting like nine live stories without a minute to <laughs> even interject. I'm going to ask you, Jessica DeMassa, because you are the person who bought Tesla cheap, bought Livongo cheap, bought a bunch of other stuff when you knew it. When is the bubble bursting? It's when people no, like you stop buying not, this it's stuff. Not, even slow. not this year. Not this Next year. Quarter. Then we'll be talking about SPACs for another 12 months plus. All right, people, if you want to find out more about SPACs and hear the anecdotes of Chatty the Dwarf over there <laughs> with this little cat, you're like, happy, sleepy, there's you, Chatty. Fantastic. You can follow him at Bolty Boy. I'm over there at Just Amasa, just trying to keep track of it all. <laughs> hi ho, hi ho. It's off to a Kaiko. Off to see you go. Okay. And please follow along with the rest of these Health in 2.0 shows. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel over there. Just go to youtube.com slash health in 2.00 and hit subscribe or follow through this link and just do it. That's the easiest way. We'll see you guys soon. Don't ask Matthew Holt about specs, people. <laughs> you never know what you get into. <laughs>